general shout. I do believe that these applauses are for some new honours that are heaped on Caesar. Why, man, he doth bestride the narrow world like a colossus, and we petty men walk under his huge legs and peep about to find ourselves dishonourable graves. Men, at some times, are masters of their fates. The fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves that we are underlings. Brutus and Caesar. What should be in that Caesar? Why should his name be sounded more than yours? Write them together. It is a fairer name. Sound them. It doth become the mouth as well. Weigh them. It is as heavy. Conjure with them. Brutus will start a spirit as soon as Caesar. Now, in the name of all the gods at once, upon what meat that this our Caesar feed that he has grown so great. Age, thou art shamed. When could they say, till now, that talked of Rome, that her wide walks encompass but one man? But woe the while. Our fathers' minds are dead, and we are governed by our mother's spirits. Our yoke and sufferance show us womanish. That you do love me, I am nothing doubtful. But you would work me too, I have some aim. How I have thought of this and of these times I shall recount hereafter. For this present, I would not, so with love I might entreat you, be any further moved. What you have said, I will consider. What you have to say, I will with patience hear and find the time both meet to hear and answer such high things. Till then, my noble friend, chew upon this. Brutus had rather be a villager than to repute himself as son of Rome under such hard conditions as these times are like to lay upon us. I am glad that my weak words have struck but thus much show of fire from Brutus. Ah, the games are done. Caesar is returning. <laughs>